welcome to week three of the Mark Nofri Head Coaches Show with the head coach of Sacred Heart Football, Mark Nofri, the 2-0 Pioneers after a thrilling 26-24 victory over Lafayette. A terrific program out of the Patriot League. Only the second time Sacred Heart has beaten a Patriot League team. Been around a long time, Coach. Can you put this one, uh, you know, up against some others? Where does this one rank? Uh, it's you know it's up there. Obviously, uh, the caliber team that Lafayette is. Um, you know they've always been at the top of the Patriot League. Um, huge win for our program for our kids. It's just uh, you know we talked about getting on a winning path and having the thing snowball and going the right direction. I think uh, it started with Marist and uh, a huge win like that to win it too, with two seconds left in the game and have a total team effort to win the game and you know offense defense special teams all played a huge part in it it's it was great for the kids and it, it goes back a long way you know the thinking about something I think the last Patriot League team we beat was Georgetown three years ago well you're right there was great things on both sides of the ball special teams but it comes down to Alec Finney's 42 yard field goal so take us through that a sack right before that and people think well maybe that takes you out of field goal range Finney comes in he's your kickoff specialist yep. your punter and he has to nail a 42-yarder under big-time pressure. Hadn't even warmed up yet. <laughs> Take us through what's going through your mind and the energy on the sideline with him coming in there and nailing the 42-yard game-winning field goal. Uh, well, we, we had talked, you know, the kickers and I got together. Like, there was 105 left or 103 left on the clock. We had one timeout, and I told the both of them that, uh, follow me. You know, if we burn our other timeout, we may have to run somebody on late. And... The plan was if we were inside the 20 yard line, we were going to go with Chris. Uh, if we were outside the 20 yard line between the 20, 25 is pretty much the max for Alec. Uh, we'd go with him. Uh, it was third down and uh, we were on about the 21 yard line, maybe the 20, that little bit of a gray area. Um, we had ran quarterback draw and you know, they had a perfect call for it and a stunt. Ended up getting uh, losing three yards on it, ended up at the 25 yard line. So. At that point, we had one timeout. We ran it down to three seconds and uh, took the timeout from the 25-yard line, and we went with Alec. And the, the plan was between, you know, outside the 20, it was going to be Alec. Inside the 20, it was going to be Chris. And uh, Alec went out there and, you know, put it through the uprights for the win. You know, uh, had faith in both of them. Obviously, Chris had hit three field goals on the day, all inside the 20-yard line. Um, and Alec, you know, like I said, he's got a little bit stronger leg uh, with distance. and. You know, to give us a shot to win it, I thought Alec was the best one to go with at that time from the 25-yard line. The word that kind of comes to mind for me here in week two, in many ways in week one as well, but in week two, tenacity. You guys give up a 98-yard uh, touchdown on the opening kickoff, school record for Lafayette, but come back, RJ Noel runs for a 66-yard touchdown moments after that. Uh, you guys are up 23-17 in the fourth quarter with two minutes to play. They drive 72 yards and score. But no quit in your team. No feeling sorry for themselves. They come right back. And twice at the beginning of the game and when it mattered most at the end of the game, you guys have an answer. Can you talk about what that says about your sure, team's character? Sure. Um, you know, we had talked all year long. You know, this process started back in January. You know, positive energy, positive enthusiasm. Um, and our kids didn't quit. And we talked about it. We've been instilling it as coaches. And the players have been bu buying into it and believing it. And they're starting to talk about it. Um, when that happened with the kickoff return to start the game, it's not how you want to start a game, but you know, looking around and getting the feel on the sidelines, there wasn't anybody panicking. There wasn't anybody, you know, putting their head down or, you know, getting discouraged. And four plays later, we're in the end zone with RJ Noel to tie the game. Uh, same thing, you know, you kick the, punt the ball away, and you rely on the defense, and uh, you know, we gave up, we gave up a touchdown in five plays, which is no big deal. The offense came right back out. The kids believed in the offense. They believed in each other. And uh, they, they went down the length of the field, kicked the field goal with no time left to, to win the game. And it's just a, it's a different attitude and a different feel that there's no quitting. These guys are playing together as a team. It, you know, it's, it's been fantastic. And they've been buying into this since last January. And it's, uh, it's a long nine months uh, to go through an off season, uh, to change a lot of things, and then to actually come out and see the things progress and to see the things execute and, and win and do it the way that we want to do it has been you know, outstanding. Smash Mouth football, too, chewing up 322 yards on the ground. It's nice when your quarterback can run for 121 yards, but Kishada Spence with his career-high 168 yards. So you're really getting the job done on the offensive line, and those guys keeping it on the ground, chewing up yards, mm -hmm. as I say, really have been doing the job uh, through two weeks. What does that do for your team when you get that kind of production? Well, I think that's outstanding. You know, it's uh, obviously Kishada is a great back. Uh, 
you know, obviously uh, Sean Bell, his backup, is a great back as well, and you could put either kid in there, and they both bring something to the table, a uh, little different running style by each, but uh, that offensive line has been doing a tremendous job for us. And uh, I, I think it's one, you know, up front with big guys. I, I really believe that if you're good on the offensive line and you're good on the defensive line and you can fit those other pieces in there, you're going to have a successful season. And if you stay healthy on those both sides of the ball like that and you can win the battle in the trenches, you got a good shot of winning. And right now we're doing that. You know, we're running the ball uh, to set up the pass. And RJ's been, you know, great with his completions. Um, he gives us that at his dimension running the ball. But I couldn't be happier with those guys up front and moving the ball in 333 yards rushing. I'll take that anytime. Talking with the uh, broadcasters of the game, Jim Sheehan, who uh, did the uh, color along with Jeff Holtz, he was very impressed with Stephen Thomas and uh, the job he did defensively. How about you? Yeah, Stefan's a great athlete. You know, he can play corner, he can play uh, safety for us. Uh, we, we put him on special teams if you want and return kicks. He did that for us last year, but he's a phenomenal athlete and uh, probably our best cover corner. Um, <clears throat> just a real competitor. Um, he'll fight and right to the bitter end. Kid had two picks, a forced fumble, uh, a couple big hits. You know, he came out of the game in the fourth quarter, uh, got nicked up a little bit and, uh, you know, was a little banged up at the time, but I mean, you're talking about a kid that will come out there and compete, and you got to pretty much drag him off the field to get him off the field, but just a phenomenal player for us, and like I said, he's been starting since his freshman year. Uh, he's become more comfortable uh, as a leader, as a junior, and he's playing fantastic football for us, and I couldn't be happier for the kid. All right, so you go on the road, two tough places to play, Mariston Lafayette, you come home 2-0. How pumped are these guys <laughs> to get on their home field? Night game under the lights, 6 o'clock, Lincoln, Saturday night. What do you know about them, and how much uh, are the guys looking forward to getting out here on campus field Saturday? Well, I, I would think that they're going to be excited to come home for a night game, first game of the year, um, and excited that they're 2-0 and and they have an opportunity to go 3-0. Obviously, you know, Lincoln, don't know much about them. I've never played them before. I, you know, watching their film, they got a pretty good quarterback. they got a really good receiver. Um, you know, they're athletic. They can, you know, create problems in space. Um, they'll be good, I told our teams this week that we need to focus on what our job at hand is and that's you know play one week at a time this is week three don't look beyond it don't worry about what's happened in the past but this is week three and that's our whole focus and they need to come out uh, they should be excited home game like you said under the lights and um, just take it to them you know and, and play with a, a sense of urgency uh, trying to make a statement and continue to build on what we've already got great job coach uh, congratulations on the win and good luck this week thanks all right coach Mark Nofri with us as always on the Head Coaches Show, so the 2-0 Pioneers go for win number three at home, Campus Field against Lincoln.